human power in the new normal, issues, trends, and challenges organized by class BCNG 521, current issues and trends in nursing under Dr. Marcos C. Ochoa. With that, may we request the attention of everyone for a opening prayer, national anthem, PWU hymn, and our schools. Sang awit ng Pilipinas.
Before we formally start the program, let me welcome participants in the Philippines and across other countries. Currently, we are live in Facebook and YouTube of Philippines Women's University channel. You may click your reactions or at chat box of what you feel today as you participate in this activity. Again, good afternoon, our dear co-nurses, nursing students, professors, respectable speakers, and benevolent organizers. We are your hosts today. I'm Anna Berlin Higo, and with me is Mr. Brett Santos. Thank you, Ma'am Anna, and thank you everyone for joining us in our webinar. Today, we have a very relevant topic regarding nursing manpower, which is so trending and being talked about in the news in some of the young media. Our Filipino nurses, after having exposed during the COVID-19 pandemic, is now facing yet again another challenge. It is a familiar sign to almost all us about overworked nurses due to nursing shortage. As a medical in our household, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the question box or raise your hand to be acknowledged. We will bring them up during the end of the presentation at our question and answer version. Also, the certificates will be sent after completion of the evaluation. So please do not forget to answer the evaluation. Also, please provide us with your complete name as you want to appear in the e-certificates and the links will be provided after. To formally open our program proper, please welcome our PWSDP in Academic Affairs, Dr. Felina C. Young, for the opening remarks. Let's give her a warm applause for planning. Good afternoon, Dr. Ra. So, okay. To the Dean of the College of Nursing, Dr. Minerva de Alla, to our competent and dynamic faculty, Dr. Marcus Ochoa, for inspiring his graduate students to conduct this webinar, particularly one entitled Nursing Manpower in the New Normal, Issues, Trends, and Challenges. To the organizers of this webinar and to our esteemed speakers in the persons of Ms. Ruth Camero, the Assistant Vice President for Nursing Services, and Mr. Ken Bahar, the Assistant Vice President for the HR Department, my dear faculty, students, and guests, a pleasant good afternoon. As we always say, we are in trying times. In fact, we say we are in uncertain times. But we are happy to say that we are now in great times. And after experiencing a phenomenal health deluge that startled and shook us from our usual complacency, we realize how the world has slowly started to hold firm and stabilize although wobbly and weak at times, and oftentimes unsure. Health took an abrupt twist, a rotation, that ranged from one degree to less than 180 degrees. As we look up, down, and sideways, we see compelling changes in the environment. Dynamism, volatility, complexity, and uncertainty are staring right in front of us, leaving us with no other alternative but to confront them, though we can choose to ignore these realities if we wish to perish and sink to oblivion. However, that can not be the case. Mindsets needs to shift, what with just so many things happening today. In the field of nursing, a number of questions have come to the fore. 
Are we now setting aside constants in the nursing field of education? Have nursing theories and concepts changed in the past years due to the pandemic? Have ways of doing things significantly commuted and reversed or transformed or even advanced or innovated? Have nursing practices become obsolete and irrelevant today? Too many nagging questions are confronting the nursing educator and practitioner. Taking a serious look at the nursing needs and demands brought about by these phenomenal changes in the global landscape, nursing trends have consequently crystallized. These are salient general directions happening in the field of nursing and in the medical field at large. They come in the form of new or reinvented ways of thinking, focus on health priorities, adoption of technology development, emphasis on health efficient processes. Attention has largely migrated to health citizenry and health care delivery to that much needed personal oriented approach. And more importantly, that much acquired quality service. Then the actuality of diversity is evident in the migration of peoples all over the world, not to mention changing demographics where individuals have changing demands, expectations, and lifestyle. The field of nursing has also gone into more of professional specialization like maternal and surgical health care and others. Likewise is stress of research that is based the basis of evidence-based nursing practice. The respect and commitment to ethical standards cannot be overlooked. Furthermore, community and health is now playing an important role in society. Lastly is the expanding role of leadership and management in the area of nursing. These are specifics to these areas, and I welcome our speakers to delve deeper into the nuances of these health-related developments. Particularly, our speakers have decided to discuss the respective expertise in the field of nursing manpower in the now new normal. In the field of healthcare, nurses are critical workforce constants. Their services are valuable to the community. Hence, how do we address significant multifaceted faceted issues and concerns in this area? Fair compensation, professional training, and person-oriented approach, not to mention quality of work life, and more specifically, migration and shortage of nurses. These are today very timely relevant, unique, and vital discussion points of interest. And our speakers are here with us to share their thoughts in this area. So today, let us congratulate our hardworking organizers and their professors, Dr. Ochoa, our dear faculty and students for attending this informational webinar. As always, we will continue to be relevant and attuned to the changing times. Thank you. And once again, good afternoon to all our participants and our organizers and speakers, and as well as to our faculty and students. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Young. May I now call on Mr. Alvin C. Lazar, the Infection Control Committee Officer of Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, our co-chair, to give us an inspirational message. Good day, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar titled Nursing Manpower in the New Normal, to be presented by our distinguished speakers. Manpower shortages are a global concern in the healthcare industry, whether it is a financial issue or a means of better management. 
My dear audience, I dare you not to give up for crisis is part of life and close scrutiny will show that most crisis situations are opportunities to either advance or stay where you are. I'm especially pleased with the discussions and activities here. And I also believe that by participating in this webinar, we are in the right place at the right time. Together, let us accelerate the exchange of ideas and the scaling up of good practices. The job of a nurse is never easy. When the pandemic began, some had just started their careers while others had been on the job for years. They risked their lives to stand by their patients and their stories are marked by hope, heartbreak, and resilience. And if there's one thing that 2020 has proven to us all, it's that nurses are some of the most hardworking, selfless, and essential members of our society. Even though nurses are now getting some of the hard-earned credit they've always deserved, it doesn't make the day-to-day -day any easier. Sometimes it's important to hear something that lifts you up a little and makes you feel that it's all worth it because it is. It's always a good idea to reflect on why you became a healthcare worker in the first place. It was to help others. It was to contribute to the greater good. Don't forget that you continue to make that contributions every day. When you're caught up in the day-to-day -day of your job, it can be difficult to remember that you're working towards something bigger than yourself. I encourage everyone to sit back and listen to what our speakers have to say. In this context, this webinar will discuss the latest issues, trends, and challenges of manpower encountered in the institutions and be able to share strategies made to address these challenges. So to our dear nurses, thank you so much for working so hard every day to make sure others are able to receive the care they need to be safe. You all are superheroes for working so hard every day. No matter how hard it gets, persevere. Stay safe and stay strong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Are we all settled down to listen? Our objectives for this webinar are to discuss the latest issues, trends and challenges on manpower encountered in the institutions, and to share the strategies made to be able to address the identified issues, trends, and challenges. Our first speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Nursing at St. Jude College and finished her Master of Arts in Nursing in the same institution. She has been in the nursing profession for more than 20 years, and because of her hard work and dedication, she rose from the rank from staff nurse to head nurse, area manager, associate director, chief nurse OIC, and now the assistant vice president of nursing service division, at Our Lady of Lords Hospital, Santa Mesa, Manila. Without much further ado, let us all welcome Miss Ruth Vilcamer. Let's give her a high, a high virtual round of applause. Um, Ruth, Ruth, please take the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Marily and Brent. Okay. So our dear Dr. Felina. Young, SVP Academic Affairs, Mr. Marco Benitez, PWU President, faculties, master of students, nurses, and online participants, good afternoon. Let me start my presentation with a video clip from DOH. The Philippines lacks around 100,000 nurses amid the migration of health workers searching for better opportunities abroad. That's according to the Department of Health officer in charge, Maria Rosario Verajere. But that's not all. Verajere also says the Philippines is also now having a shortage of doctors, pharmacists, medical technologists, and other health specialists. Verjere hopes the country would retain the 7,000 annual deployment cap of new higher medical professionals abroad to address the problem. 
Nurses Marami pay tayong shortage ngayon. Hindi lang The Philippines Nurses play a crucial role in the health system. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, nurses' lives in healthcare systems changed dramatically, causing them to face stressful and overwhelming problems in the daily fight against the disease. The pandemic spread rapidly globally from the year 2020 to now. This challenged people's lives and routines. It has placed a significant burden on healthcare providers, particularly nurses and doctors, in both hospital and community settings, where the majority of the workforce has been deployed to help them manage and prevent the spread of the disease. The COVID-19 pandemic challenges the healthcare system all over the world. There is a shortage of medical resources and bed capacity in the hospitals. The Philippines alone has 10 hospitals bed per 10,000 people, while most resources are in urban areas, leaving the rural areas with even lower capacity. This shortage forced nurse leaders to transform the services so that the hospital can increase the capacity to attend to the needs of inpatients and incoming patients, especially in critical care. On the other hand, this requires them to be more responsive, resilient, and adaptive while expecting their workforce to exercise the same characteristics. Nursing is a vital aspect of the healthcare industry, accounting for 59% of the workforce. However, due to various causes, including the turnover, the nursing profession continues to experience shortages both worldwide and locally. According to the World Health Organization, there is a global shortage of 5.9 million nurses with low and middle income or developing nations experiencing, experiencing the word shortages. We all know that the Philippines is a prominent nurse exporter around the world. Although the Philippines is one of the world's largest exporters of nurses, it is also plugged by a nursing shortage. About 5 to 10% of Filipino nurses resign from their jobs to pursue work abroad, which grows a concern for the future of the healthcare system in the country. The current challenge that the Nursing Services Division faces is the continuing shortage of nurses globally because of the migration. Based on our experience from 2020 to 2021, during the height of the pandemic, the number of nurses is decreasing due to the fear of, a part of acquiring the disease. Also, our nurses pulled out of their parents because of the fear. However, we are fortunate, the Lourdes Hospital, hospital are fortunate because our nurses stayed. We survived for those two years. The nurses go on a 12-hour shift five days a week to handle a COVID and non-COVID patients. They are the true heroes of our country and most especially in our hospital. The lack of opportunities to go abroad for two years is why the Philippines and our hospital survived during the pandemic days. There was no opportunity to go to other countries, so they decided to stay here. In 2022, last year, the opportunity knocked on every nurse whose dream is to go abroad and have a greener pasture and a good life. The shortage of manpower started in our institution and all over the country. 
because of the competition and salary comparisons between the private and government hospitals, the government increased the pay for the nurses, which led to the challenge faced by the private hospitals. The second issue is about the stress and mental health exhaustion due to the extended shift hours. Our nurses experience burnout since the health protocols are loosened and the workforce can go out and enjoy their various activities. After two years of consistent daily behavior or routine of our nurses, uh, hospital, and bahay lamang, so they feel uh, regularly for almost two years, hospital bahay lang ang routine ng aming mga nurses. Another issue is the K-12 program and low enrollees because of the two years gap resulting to a backlogs. Deteriorating quality of nursing graduates as a result of online classes due to a pandemic also. Next slide, please. Here at Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, we have a campaign or strategy to cope with the manpower shortage and to value our nurses such as. We shorten our training programs for 10 days didactics and two weeks, two weeks exposure to the unit to three to four days only for those who are experienced. This is aligned with the competency and mentoring during the guidelines of the hospitals. We also shifted the learning environment into a modern way using a platform for lectures. The, also, the hospital also provided online modules for cascading information and lectures. We also have a nursing skills lab so that the new nurses can do a basic training for the basic procedures. The nursing service division uh, created a dedicated education unit or DEU where the newly licensed nurses who are products of the, of the pandemic will be trained for one to two months on the basic nursing skills to make them truly competent and confident RN at bedside. We also expanded the duties and responsibilities of the nursing aides, putting ward clerks in the nursing units to lessen the workload of the nurses. We also have a plantilla for the underboard nurses, or what we call SNA. Uh, they are the one who do a basic procedures that don't need a license like vital signs, CBG monitoring, and we will have a training program for them to do other procedures. We also augment our nurses by pull-out system from special units to general units. Our nurses here in Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital are exposed to general units before we deploy them to a special units like emergency room, hemodialysis unit, oncology, and operating room and delivery room. Maximizing the full capacity of a unit when there is enough manpower. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Uh, for the hiring and retention program, we are the engagement activities programs like monthly, ce uh, monthly celebration meets our CEO and other activities in coordination with HROD are continuously implemented uh, to boost uh, the employee morale of our staff nurses. Also, we do a uh, periodic evaluation and feedback uh, huddle with the, uh, with the supervisors and managers, as well as constant mentoring and coaching to assist the employees in achieving their goals. Career ladders uh, are also implemented here in Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital because uh, it is the uh, place to identify vital leadership uh, roles uh, in the division such as 
charge nurses and clinical preceptors for uh, for our ano natin, for our nurses who stayed two years and above. Uh, here, a uh, body system for our new nurses so that they can easily adapt with the environment and the fast track and to fast track their training. This program is also for our senior nurses who work in the hospital for two years and more. Of course, we appreciate their dedication and commitment to work in our hospital. Leadership and management programs shall also be continuously implemented, such as unit management, seminars for the incumbent managers and supervisors, as a succession planning program to identify and develop employees with leadership potential. Uh, kinikilala namin po dito sa Lourdes Hospital yung mga nagstay po na nurses namin dito may, may mga potential so we have a plan for them uh, uh, job leveling for uh, for all our nurses here okay uh, other programs for the recruitment and retention of nurses will be discussed by our ABB for HROT even though we are facing some crisis our hospital, Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital Management, is doing, is doing their very best to give what needs to be. We make sure that we are making them feel they are cared for, not only monetary, but feel safe and acknowledged, of course, not only for the nurses, but the whole employees of Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital. I would like to say thank you for all the nurses of Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, Nursing Assistant, SNA, for their continued support, commitment, dedication, and sacrifices. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Let me end my slides by saying that the strength of the team is each individual member. And the strength of the team is every member by Phil Jackson. Thank you and good afternoon to all. Thank you very much, Mamrud Romero, for that very informative lecture. Indeed it was. And uh, you may now start posting your questions. There are any, and just a reminder, these questions will be entertained after the second talk. And with that, let me introduce to you our next speaker. He is a strategic and well-connected corporate executive with almost 20 years of experience in the field of recruitment, learning and development, personal and employer branding, effective communications, and corporate communications. He is also recognized for quality recruits of talents, personalized approach to training and program management, consistent personal brand, and executive approach to effective voice and written communications. He's an effective consultant with a realistic ability to improve a personality aspect one step at a time. A graduate of, of the University of the Philippines, Vice President of Human Resource and Organizational Development of Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, please welcome Mr. Kenneth L. Bahar. Thank you very much, Brent, Murley, and the rest Thank of you, the organizers. If I may be allowed to share my screen. Yep, there you go. Can you see it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, okay. Let me just put it in presentation mode. Ayan, okay. So thank you very much. Um, Dr. Young, fa different faculty of BWU, the organizers, the hosts, the students, to all of you, uh, sa ating lahat, to my um, colleague also in uh, um, um, LEADCOM, kay Ruth, thank you very much. Uh, hi, Ruth. And then, of course, to the rest of you in, in Lourdes Hospital. So let me tell you something about embracing nursing recruitment strategies. And kung mamadapatin nyo, okay, my presentation will be a combination of English and Taglish. So medyo mabigat kasi yung topic na ito. And we know for a fact that nursing recruitment challenges has always been there. And, and let's see if I can uh, do uh, a different approach on this topic. At the end of my presentation, 
Okay, I have three objectives. First, I'd like everyone to learn the nursing realities that we have accepted already in Lourdes Hospital. Uh, you will also be aware of the nursing issues and challenges on the human side. Okay, kanina kasi binanggit na ni, ni Ruth Okay, um, the greater or shall I say the deeper um, the nursing issues and challenges, but mine would be on the manpower side. And with those issues, what is our game plan that can affect the recruitment and attract the, the attraction and retention of Lourdes nurses? So let me begin by saying or sharing the nursing realities that we have accepted. When we say we have accepted, okay, these are the things that at the onset, alam na po namin na mangyayari ito. At the onset, nag-iintay na lang po kami that all these three things will actually happen. Okay, and why is this important? This is important because we want to maximize the stay of the nurses, okay, with, lady, with our Lady of Lourdes Hospital. Okay, I know that they. I know that they will. Uh, that we will face this, but as long as they are with us, we will maximize the talents and the strengths that each nurse must have. So, isa isahin natin ito. Okay, sabi sa meme, am I not enough? Pang okay, pangit ba ako? Kapalit palit ba ako? And then the the guy said, no. If not, then bakit mo kami iiwan? Of course, there will be opportunities. Okay, abroad. Okay, and it's 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 actually a matter of time kung kailan kung kailan sila uh, aalis. Given this, given this, um, I will move to the next slide because we cannot compete with overseas offers. The overseas offers can buy them, <laughs> their friends, or even lose this hospital. Okay, just kidding. Now, later on, I'll show you the reasons why they are resigning. If there are personal reasons, if there are reasons uh, um, other than overseas, we tend to actually talk to them. Hinihilot po namin sila. But if they say the magic word, Sir, Mom, mag-aabrod na po ako. Mahira pong, tang Mahira pong tapatan yan. Because we know for a fact that, there, that the offers abroad are really okay, something that, that every nurse can actually aspire for. For. Hindi po namin kayang tapatan yan ng, ng, ng Lourdes Hospital. And sa HR, hindi pwedeng tatapatan lang namin yan. Kung tatapatan namin yan, okay, dapat i-increase po namin ang lahat ng sweldo ng nurses. And not because somebody wants to go abroad, okay, siya lang po ang makakaranas ng increase. We don't operate that way. The third one is that our support to their personal and career development will just delay their big decision. Sabi nga dito sa meme na to, at the end of the day, iiwan pa rin po tayo ng mga taong mag -e stay So ayan, may hugot po kami sa HR. So, alam namin iiwan kami, but is it a reason for HR not to develop their personal and career and careers within Lourdes Hospital? Of course not. Because, okay, obligation po namin sa human resources to provide all the necessary support sa bawat nurse na maha-hire namin. Okay? Of course, when, they, when we hire them, okay, kailangan namin silang i-train, kailangan namin silang i-develop. And when we do that, okay, the gumagaling sila. And kapag gumagaling sila, these are being extended to patient care to patient experience. And lahat ng ito will actually affect the ecosystem of Lourdes Hospital. But, okay, given that, okay, uh, hindi na ba sila aalis? Posibleng hindi na. Or posibleng it just the delay lang dila that when the right opportunity comes, okay, um, aalis din po sila sa uh, alis din po sila sa Lourdes. Again, the reason I'm saying this is because we wanted to be prepared because we wanted to plan ahead. That's why I'm very uh, fortunate that the team of Ruth, uh, they have what, they, what we call a flight risk plan or flight risk list. Alam na namin kung, kel, kung sino sa mga nurses namin ang may offers abroad, okay, kailan sila aalis. 
And because of this, we're able to plan things out in order na hindi mapilayan ang nurses natin. Okay? Given this, okay, earlier I said this, that Ruth uh, mentioned okay, deeper reasons, but for manpower, these are the things that we are uh, facing. First, high attrition resulting to nurse short shortage, the extended shift hours resulting to burnout, and the salary competition in local hospitals resulting to career instability. And allow me please to discuss this one by one. Una, high attrition resulting to nurse shortage. So nagtatanong, magre-resign na ba ako? Because of the attrition, because of the high attrition, uh, um, nadadagdagan pa nito ang nurse shortage. Anong ibig sabihin? As it is, sabi nga kanina ni Ruth, ang daming uh, uh, shortage ng nurse. Okay. Wala pang nagre-resign, may kulang na sa number ng nurse manpower. Dagdagan mo pa na magre-resign, e talagang lolobo ang bilang ng kailangang habulin ng human resources. And if I may share our data, in 2022 alone, our average monthly attrition is actually at 4%. We have hired 43 nurses in 2022. You cannot underestimate that mahirap mag-hire ng 43 nurses. However, kung 60 naman ang magre-resign, edi kulang pa. Okay, deficit pa ang HR ng 17 nurses. That is on a ratio of nurse hire to nurse resign. Wala pa dito yung kulang na hinahabol namin. But you have to take note that the 60 resignations is not actually the ones who were hired in 2022. Okay, my iba dyan ay uh, they, were hired, they were hired years back. Ang average tenure ng Lourdes Hospital is actually three and a half years. So tumatagal naman po ang aming mga nurses dito sa Lourdes Hospital. Out of the 43 nurses that we, uh, out of the 60 resignations that we had last year, 20 po doon ang nag-resign immediately. Anong ibig sabihin? Ngayon nag-send ng resignation, ngayon po ang last day, minuto lamang or bukas, hindi na po namin sila makikita. And it's a problem for us in HR. Why? Kasi unang-una, hindi namin mahahabol. If somebody resigns today, hindi naman po pwede na the following day, ay meron na po kagad kaming kapalit. And of course, those who are left in the hospital has to cover the shift ng nag-immediate resignation. Another one would be 15, 15 has resigned, sorry, 15, sorry, 15 has resigned okay, within three months. And the, the, the reasons vary. Ano ang kanila mga reasons? Yung iba who are actually came from the, who came from the provinces would like to try in Metro Manila. After three months, I said, hindi ko pala po gusto dito sa Maynila. I'd rather go back to the provinces. Anyway, kahit saan ako pumunta, there are nurse vacancies that I can actually apply. Looking at the graph, the number one reason for resignation in Lubis Hospital is overseas employment at 30%. Kaya sobrang hindi po talaga namin kayang habulin ito. And, but we have some solutions out of that. And I will tell you as we go along. These resignations, these shortages led to extended shift hours ng mga natirang nurses. And kapag gawin mo yun araw-araw, it will definitely result to burn out. Okay? So kung marami nang inuutos, okay, sisigawan na tayo ni Ivy Aguas or ni Lily Cruz ng sandali. Dahan-dahan lang po muna because it's something na hindi na po kaya ng kanilang katawan. Okay? Another, nurse, another challenges is the salary competition in local hospitals would normally resort to career instability. I'm referring to those nurses who do not have any plans of going abroad but wants to go to hospitals offering higher compensation. Whether pabida ang hospital na yan or hindi, okay, 
it's an issue and a challenge that we need to face. Hindi kasalanan ng mga aplikante or hindi kasalanan ng mga nurses, okay, if another hospital is paying higher than us. So, okay, ano po ang ginagawa namin? What's our game plan? Okay, first, we have a comprehensive recruitment plan. We have engagement activities and temporary solutions, and we provide allowances so, which are tax-free, and we align our comp and bend with existing market rates. Let me elaborate this once again. First is we have a comprehensive recruitment plan. We have a comprehensive recruitment plan. Okay, in the in the absence of a limited time, I don't have the time to discuss a recruitment plan. But basically, if you can see, okay, the 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 infographic or the um the photo, okay, we have identified our SWOT. Anong ibig sabihin? Okay. We have identified our strength as Lourdes Hospital. What are our strengths? Okay, that we can leverage in order for our team in recruitment to attract people. Ano naman ang aming mga weakness na kailangan namin i-improve so that we will be able to attract talent, we will be able to retain talent. Ano yung mga opportunities na pwede pa namin ma magawa? Okay? And one opportunity that I can share is that we have not saturated uh, recruitment in the provinces. Okay, Last Wednesday, okay, our team in recruitment has went to Dasmarinas Cavite just to recruit nurses. And Dasmarinas Cavite is just one of the many provinces that we will visit this year in order for us to attract nurses. And of course, we have to address the threats. Ano ba yung mga threat na meron dito sa amin, sa nurses, sa HR, and sa paligid ng Ludes na posibleng maka-shake? Uh, ng momentum ng aming mga nurses. Our, strat our, our, our recruitment strategy is based on attraction, retention, and administration. We have strategies to attract employees, to retain employees, and some administration things. Ano itong mga administration things? These are things that could either delay the processes or nagpapahirap sa mga nurses, nagpapahirap sa recruitment ng mga nurses that we have to address in order for them to have a smooth recruitment experience. Okay. Then our programs are actually into five Bs. Anong ibig sabihin? We have programs in order to bind bind nurses to stay with us we buy talents eto yung mga talents sa, sa labas we build our own pool na nasa loob we borrow nurses okay in the form of consultants and we also have some strategies to bounce second is sabi nga kanina ni Ruth we have engagement activities and temporary solutions engagement activities we have a an engagement committee in HR that focuses on activities. At of course, isa doon ang nurses. Ang nurses every month, they have what we call a P. Pauls Kamustahan. Okay. Our president is named Paul. Kaya P. Pauls Kamustahan. In which the birthday celebrators have the chance to actually speak and ask the president anything under the sun. In the slide, you can see our latest engagement activity in which the nursing services division has actually won first runner-up in our uh, uh, competition. Nakuha nila ang first runner-up and then nakuha nila ang best actor and best actress sa play na yan. And of course, dito meron ding um, um, uh, choir members. Meron Santa Claus uh, also on that one. So kilala niyo ba yung Santa Claus dyan? Okay, put it in the chat box. <laughs> temporary solutions. I forgot. The temporary solutions, the temporary solutions, these are solutions okay, that mitigate okay, the risk. Okay. As much as possible, okay, as much as possible, okay, kailangan habuli ng HR yung recruitment. Okay. Otherwise, the temporary solutions will easily fade off. 
because to begin with, they are not sustainable. Pero para lang maitawid, then we have some temporary um, solutions. Case in point is yung mga gustong, yung mga nabuburn out, instead of resigning, we allow them to have a leave of absence um, and, and among other things. Third is that we provide tax-free allowances and we align our compensation and benefits with existing market rates. Kung nakikita niyo ang aming compensation benefit system, it's a combination of indirect compensation and direct compensation. Direct compensation, direct compensation, yan yung mga, okay, pera. Yan, eto yung mga ramdam ng mga uh, uh, ino-offera namin or yung mga nasa loob na. We have, we have basic pay, Okay, overnight pay, rice subsidy, okay, and, and other allowances that you can see on the screen. The indirect naman, these are protection programs, leave benefits, and other prerequisites that we give to the employee. Okay, we give them a day, day one pa lang my life insurance na sila and, and all other things. In the uh, benefit with existing market rates, okay, the good thing about Ludus Hospital is that we are part of the Metro Pacific Health in which it has 19 other hospitals. So kami-kami po sa HR nagtatanungan, okay, how do we fare okay, in terms of salary? Okay, current studies are being done already on that aspect and as soon as it is approved by MPH, then we will be able to roll that out. Yep. And then, eto yung lagi, po na, lagi ko pong sinasabi. Attraction is with human resources. Kumbaga, okay, give the attraction to us. Kami po yung mag attract And the way we do this is that we provide it in accordance to our talent management framework. Okay. In the talent management framework, okay, starting from stage one all the way to stage six, we make sure that the the process the processes or the practices are actually seamless para hindi na pahirapan yung mga empleyado in recruitment for example okay in recruitment for example we talk to candidates we talk to candidates about their career aspirations okay mina manage namin yung expectations nila of what we can and what we cannot offer. Wala pong bulagaan na mangyayari. We do not uh, provide information to the candidates okay, that we will not be able to fulfill. We also have a personality assessment to determine the candidates' strengths and weaknesses and how we can improve their potential. Free yung aming employment medical exam. And sabi ko nga kanina, we provide both monetary and non-monetary benefits during the job offer. Once they sign the offer, pupunta na po sila sa onboarding. Okay, ito po yung side na to. In onboarding, we provide HR onboarding to manage your expectations and functional onboarding. Sabi kanina ni Ruth, okay, they provide a very comprehensive training Okay, na actually 10 days. Kung, kung, kung uh, um, experienced hire na, okay, pwede na ang up to 4 days. But those who are not yet um, experienced, comprehensive po talaga ang binibigay namin. We provide the necessary tools of trade so that they can function best in their jobs. After onboarding, we monitor the new hire's performance during third and fifth month para lang malaman namin saan ba kami nagkukulang, saan ba namin kayo susuportahan. Okay? So that this is also aligned for those who resigns after three months from the date of hiring. We pinpoint strengths and weaknesses so that we can maximize their performance. Kapag na-regular na sila, meron po tayong tinatawag na learning and development stage in which we ensure that learning is optimized. Okay. As, as, ang learning po namin ay dalawa. Leadership, okay. leadership uh, 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 training programs and then functional training programs. Okay. Yung leadership, meron po kami ilo-launch na Lourdes Academy. Um, and then on the functional side, eto naman po ang bawat uh, division. And sa nursing ng, ng Lourdes Hospital, uh, and as well as, in, uh, as well as in ICC, marami po silang um, tinitrain or marami po silang training programs na sinasalihan. 
We also follow the 70-20 learning framework in which we believe that 70% of the uh, of, of learning happens when you actually experience doing the, um, um, a specific uh, task. 20% is exposure and 10% is education. Every training po namin may tinatawag po kami tina, uh, learning application plan form. Okay? It's a tedious form. <laughs> well, probably sasabihin ng mga Tagaludes na ang hirap feel up pa nun. Okay? Um, the reason for that is ayaw namin na after the training walang application na mangyayari. So dapat every training may application na mangyayari so that ultimately gagaling at gagaling yung mga taong tinitrain. We offer functional and leadership programs and we also subsidize uh, master's programs. Kanina nabanggit ni Ruth yung tinatawag namin na SNA or eto yung mga underboard. Okay? Pwede po silang um, uh, pwede po namin isubsidize yung kanilang um, um, pagbo-board or, or once they become um, nurses, okay, i-increase po namin ang kanilang mga salary. And then career development. Okay, Ruth is a testimony of someone who rose from the ranks, who started as a, who started as a uh, registered nurse and now holding an executive role. Okay, yung mga iba po sa amin. Okay, katulad katulad ni na Brent. Okay, and and okay and others. Okay, they also have a uh, career development. And lastly, eto na yung pinakamahirap na tanggapin. When they are already ready to move to another company or another country, we support them by providing good recommendations as we see fit. Okay, of course, hindi po kami magbibigay ng recommendation kung hindi naman po sila uh, uh, maayos ang kanilang tenure with us. We give them a smooth offboarding process from securing employee clearance to certificate of employment. So that's how we attract talents in Lourdes Hospital. Second thing is, Retention is with nursing and all divisions, and this is just in collaboration with human resources. Okay, kumbaga, okay, we provide the macro retention program. Okay, um, pero yung yung day-to-day -day retention activity dapat po mangyayari siya sa nursing and sa lahat ng division. Anong ibig pong sabihin niyan? Our managers and HR are helping each other how we can retain employee. Di ba? Kasi for example, okay, meron lang programa how to retain employees, pero pagdating naman sa field ay hindi masyado feel ng mga bagong empleyado na hindi sila sinusuportahan, then bali wala po ang programa ng human resources and that's why it should always be a collaboration with all the divisions and lastly okay attraction should surpass or even out the retention remember the 43 60 ratio na uh, sinabi ko kanina okay if we're able um if our statistics is actually at 60 uh, re resignation, dapat yung attraction namin ay 60 or even 65. Okay? Para lang ma-even out yung mga nagre-resign. And again, wala pa dito yung kailangan naming numbers na habulin. So, that uh, summarizes my uh, presentation. So at this point, I hope that you should that you should be able to, or you have learned already the nursing realities that we have accepted. You have been aware of our nursing issues and challenges, and you know, uh, and you have known our game plan affecting our attraction and retention. Let me conclude my presentation by saying this, this personal quote, that the healthcare industry will not be sustained without the nurses. Wherever they are in the country or in the world, we need to support them so they can support patients and give them an opportunity to have a better health condition and even a longer life. So with this, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for the invitation. And I am now uh, stop. I will now stop sharing my screen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Ken, for that uh, very enlightening uh, lecture. So, Mamurli. Uh, okay, let us now proceed with the question and answer portion. So we can have a lot of questions in our chat box. 
Yes, so if I may, uh, I'm good answer. Okay, are you ready for the questions? I hope. Question <laughs> <laughs> for Sir Ken. So, uh, Sir Ken, uh, we have uh, the first question from our PWU faculty. So, hmm. the question is: What are your measures of success for the strategies mentioned? So that's the first question, sir. Yep. Uh, we have, okay, uh, it's going to be very long, okay, because the measures and the strategies are the KPIs of my staff. <laughs> but to give you, but to give you, but to give you an, um, to give you an overview, um, w one of the measures that we have, uh, for example, is, is the quality of hires. When we say quality of hires, okay, my staff, okay, are being rated if uh, uh, an employee or a new hire is not able to achieve or is not able to become or to, to be confirmed as a regular employee. Dapat hindi lang po kami hire ng hire. Okay? Okay? Those who are hired, okay, at hindi nagtagal at hindi na regularize, okay, napupuntosan po yung aming mga recruiters. That's why I emphasize earlier, okay, I emphasize earlier na um, it should be a collaboration kasi kawawa naman po ang, ang mga recruiters if okay uh, a new hire has actually a new hire has actually resigned just because sinigawan ng doktor o kung ano pa man na other na 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 dahilan another measure okay another measure another measure of success is that if they are able to like stay within 2 years in the hospital okay happy na po kami sa 2 years okay although in Lourdes okay higher po ang aming ano it's actually 3 years yung average tenure ng hospitals so maraming salamat sa buong nursing for staying and maraming salamat kina Ruth and other and other uh, uh, managers kina Merly kina 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 Alvin kina Brent okay for helping us on that aspect. We cannot hear you Brent. naka ka yata Brent. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir, for that answer. Uh, I hope uh, it has addressed the question. So may I proceed now, sir, to the yeah, next go question? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So the next question is also from our faculty of uh, PWU. Actually, uh, sir has, a, has three questions. Okay, so the first one would be, how do you address the salary issue with regards to the disparity between the government versus private healthcare institutions? Okay. Nako, mahirap pong mahirap pong tanong 'yan and mahirap at mahaba-habang um 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 usapan 'yan. Okay? Uh, normally when we do salary benchmarking kasama po ang government sa sa consider namin meaning to say when we buy data from from for example Towers Watson or any other uh, uh, institutions providing market intelligence on salaries kasama po yan but okay we are not competing with the government okay um, ang lagi po kasi namin sinasabi is in the government security of tenure is not there um, so yun po yung yun po yung it's something na pambawi po ng ng uh, Lourdes Hospital okay the government may pay may pay a higher um, um, salary but the security of tenure is is not there okay also also in 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 Lourdes kung nakita niyo po yung training programs and all other things uh, uh, binubusog po namin yung aming mga nurses in the absence of lower salary if we are going to compare that to the government um, are we losing are we losing talents to the government? Yes, definitely, but it's not that high. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, we have people who left Lourdes, went to the government, and even went back to Lourdes. Okay, para lamang po sa sa mga nabanggit kung dahilan yung security of tenure and and of course the other uh, 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 factors. Um, Okay, that's that's number one. Unless you Ruth, my I know my my pending idegdeg. 
Thank you, sir, again. Uh, mm. Second question. The second question, sir. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, for the second question, sir, have you tried to explore the possibility of creating a nurse registry so that you can accept nurses who are willing to do a part-time job, just like the Western country? Yep. Okay. Nursing registry, uh, um, to be honest, wala kaming formal. Uh, wala kaming formal na, na nursing registry although okay we are tracking kung saan sila napupunta as a matter of fact uh, late last year we experimented we experimented a a uh, a model okay together with together with Ruth um eto yung mga resigned employees na ng Lourdes yeah. na natatagalan magka-visa Okay, so we hired them back, okay, to become um, nurse consultants. Okay. okay, but again, back tayo sa reality. I, alam namin at one point, <laughs> iiwan din kami nitong mga consultants na ito. But it's 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 a win-win situation for all of us. Kasi habang nakatenga si, habang nakatenga si, si uh, nurse papalipad, okay, at least kumikita siya. Habang, habang kami naman ay may shortage, okay, at least kampante kami na kahit walang training na yung taong yan, e eh galing na kasi siyang Lourdes, then at least alam namin that the quality of patient care that he or she has is something that is um, within our standards. Okay? Kaya yun po yung ano, yun po yung ano. But it's a good suggestion. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, if I may address it on a, if I may address it on a Metro Pacific level, eto po yung head office namin. Okay. The Metro Pacific level is uh, considering getting or buying a company um, which specializes in nursing recruitment alone. So un un unless uh, hindi ko alam ang development non meaning to say baka may nabili na okay then it's something that uh, tinitingnan na namin kasi ang nangyayari is initially we wanted to tie up with a a nursing recruitment firm tapos if a farm out and then every every play every recruit that we have we 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 will pay so instead of doing that, okay, why, 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 why not like buy the entire company tapos lahat ng nurses kung, kung saan siya malapit ay doon siya if a farm out. For example, in the database of that company, um, merong, merong uh, uh, sampo na taga Mandaluyong, sampo na taga Manila, then we have to decide whether 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 it's it's actually us, okay, um, Lourdes Hospital or yung um, uh, other Metro Pacific hospitals in Manila, for example, yung Maddox, um, yan po yung um, ginagawa. Yep. All right. So, we still have a few more, sir. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sige. Uh, maybe, uh, yes. maybe call on Mr. Ayan de Torres, the question notion for the group. Sir Ryan, are you there? Uh, hello, po. Uh, <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Nice to hear from you. Nice to see colleagues from OLLH. I'm doing this. By the way, and I'm also a previous staff of uh, Lourdes. I had been there for for five years. Yeah. So, um. For my question for for Ma'am Ruth, and paano po natin na ensure yung patient safety as we complete nursing vacancies? Kasi syempre, ang hirap ng challenge natin ngayon, especially na nagre-recover pa lang tayo sa pandemic. How do we ensure na may patient safety pa din despite na yung mga nurses na nag nag-fill out tayo ng nursing nursing vacancies? And for Ken, um ano yung naging role ng HR to ensure that May active participation yung other divisions like medical services, HR, ancillary to in to promote yung nursing retention and well-being. Kasi nurses are also working with other uh, professionals in the healthcare. And 
um, there are also instances that they had been, um, they are affecting the retention and then the capacity and performance of nurses. How do we ensure that yung HR natin na kakatulong din sa kanila para ma-promote yung kanilang retention and well-being? Yun po. Salamat. Okay. <laughs> Ako muna, Ken. Okay. Thank you, Ryan, for your question. So, si Ryan is a training officer natin, Ken. Previous training officer ng Nursing Service Division. So, yeah. Nice to yes, meet you, Ryan. So, so, more on training talaga ang question ni Ryan. So, uh, to answer your question, Ryan, uh, so, uh, syempre, pagdating sa training programs ng nurses, so, nakita mo rin kangina na bakit kami ma- bin, uh, inuntian yung uh, diba one month dati ang training natin, training program. For nurses ngayon, nagkaroon kami ng 10 days didactics and 2 weeks exposure na lang. Kasi para at least uh, mapunan namin yung kakulangan namin sa sa, u- sa unit para makapag-handle ng patients. But may make sure namin talaga yung patient uh, safety ng bawat isa. So meron kami mga committees, meron kami meron kami provide na um, preceptors and charge nurse and also... Nagawa din kami talaga ng uh, checklist for uh, uh, competency checklist, Ryan. So, lahat ng mga procedures uh, ginawa na namin talaga ngayon. May compilation na kami dyan. Hindi namin pinapabayaan, hindi namin dinadala sa unit na hindi competent yung mga nurses natin sa unit. And then, uh, the supervisors and the managers as well, uh, lagi nilang tinitingnan din talaga yun. So, meron kami committee for patient safety and then sa quality din. Thank you. From from my end naman, okay, I am lucky to have a president who sees the interconnectivity of other uh, uh, divisions. So bago pa makita uh, bago pa magkaroon ng implementation ang HR, okay, during our lead com or what we call leadership committee, lead com meetings, okay, pinagsasabihan na kami ng aming presidente na na we have to work hand in hand okay in order for us to really give support to nurses okay anong ibig anong 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 ibig sabihin so for example um when when a nurse okay is following up something from ancillary or another division okay eto po ay dapat uh, inorganize okay uh, or or eto po ay 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 binibigyan ng tuon okay um for example um in the finance section naman in the finance section, dapat yung uh, billing and collection hindi rin matagal. Kumbaga, may turnaround time in almost all aspects of the other divisions okay? because ultimately, ang nurses kasi ang nakaharap meaning to say meaning to say uh, uh, internally alam namin alam namin billing and collection yan alam namin ancillary connection yan okay but okay sa mata ng pasyente okay yung nurses ang nakaka nakaka ano nakaka uh, experience ng ganun Okay, sa mata nila o okay, sa mata nila yung nurses ang sinasabi, "Uy, ang bagal-bagal nyo. They are on the end recipient of all this things happening within the organization." So that's why, okay, tama ka, um, um Ryan, okay, the the interconnectivity has to be addressed and I'm and, and I'm glad to share you that it's happening in Lourdes Hospital. It's not as perfect, okay, or it's not as smooth as we uh, uh, expect it to be, but we're getting there already. Tama ba ako, Ruth? <laughs> um, naka, naka, ano ka, naka mute. Yes, yeah, sorry. Tama ka dun, Ken. Uh, nag-start na kami dyan, Ryan, so papunta na dun. So makikita mo na improvement ng Lourdes talaga pagdating dun sa mga bagay na Thank you. Thank po, Ma'am Ruth and Ken. Parang gusto ko nang bumalik ulit. <laughs> come here, come here. Come, 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 come. Thank you po. Thank you. Nice to see you, everyone. Thank sure. you. I love you. This. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Ryan, for your wonderful questions. <laughs> okay. We still have a lot of questions popping in our chat box. We still have a few more. But we can only entertain a few questions in uh, okay. and, and and so sorry, I'm I'm sorry to say this. I need to move on to another Zoom meeting. Medyo <laughs> medyo <laughs> long Saturday po itong 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 araw na ito. So I can only stay for the next uh, two minutes. Okay, pasensya na po. 
Okay, okay sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. And uh, I guess uh, we shall move on. If there are any other questions, uh, we will they they will be emailed na lang. Sure. Okay. And now, uh, let me cut through our question and answer portion. Uh, again, uh, please do not be discouraged. It's just, if you still have questions in mind, just feel free to uh, put them in the chat box and we will email them. And then we will email you back for their responses. Okay? So with that, may I may we proceed with the awarding of, our, of the e-certificates for our speakers? Okay. Okay, so the Philippine Women's University is here hereby award the certificate of appreciation to Miss Ruth B. Camero in grateful and sincere gratitude for her selfless and commendable service rendered as resource speaker during the conduct of our webinar entitled Nursing Manpower in the New Normal, Issues, Trends, and Challenges, given this 11th day of February 2003 at the Philippine Women's University, Manila, Philippines. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Ruth. Thank you. Thank you for and, all right, thank you. And also to Sir, Sir Kenneth. Again, uh, the, the Philippine Women's University is here, hereby awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Sir Kenneth Bahar in a grateful and uh, sincere gratitude for his selfless and uh, commendable uh, service rendered as resource speaker during the conduct of our webinar entitled Nursing Manpower in the New Normal, Issues, Trends, and Challenges given this 11th day of February 2023 at the Philippine Women's University Manila, Philippines, signed by our uh, program chairperson, Sir Alex Blanco, our program advisor at the School of Nursing, uh, Sir Marcos Ochoa, and our beloved dean of the School of Nursing, uh, Dean De Alla. Okay. So thank you again, Sir Ken. Thank, thank you, you very much, Brent, Murley. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Alex. Okay, for, um, he's been very patient to me. <laughs> thank you, sir, <laughs> for these slides and everything. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, thank you, sir for thank you, for our overall committee chairperson, Mr. Alex James Blanco, for the closing report. Okay, sir James, Sir Alexis James, please take the floor. Our PWU President, Mr. Marco Benitez, PWU SVP for Academic Affairs, Dr. Felina Young, Dean School of Nursing, Dr. Minerva D. B. De Alla, faculty, colleagues, fellow students, family and friends, a pleasant afternoon to all. Let me take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to the Philippine Women's University Management headed by our president, Mr. Benitez, the School of Nursing, headed by our dean, Minerva De Alla, for giving us this chance to talk about one of the trending issues in the field of nursing. We would also like to express our gratitude to our professor, Dr. Marcos, Marcos Ochoa, for guiding and mentoring us throughout this webinar. Shortage in nursing manpower or nurses is a big issue, not only here in the Philippines, but globally. It was a great opportunity that we had the chance to discuss this matter. With that, we would like to thank our resource speaker, Ms. Ruth V. Camero and Mr. Ken Bahar for sharing their expertise in the field, hoping we were able to impart new knowledge or strategies on how to deal with the issues mentioned. More than that, this webinar will not be possible with the help of my fellow classmates. Let me introduce and say thanks to our committee. For our program chair, for our program committee headed by the chairperson, Ms. Anna Merlin Migo, and the members, Ms. Angeline Delara, Ms. Frances May Bicol, Mr. Brent Carlos Santos. 
for our technical and physical arrangement committee, uh, for our technical committee, headed by the chairperson, Ms. Mary Catherine Abinido and Ms. Catherine Morilla. For the physical arrangement committee, headed by the chairperson, Mr. James Bene Benedict Joven and Ms. Merle Rodriguez. For the marketing and communications committee, we have Ms. Cyril Salio and Ms. Charmaine Plasabas. And together with the vice chairperson, Mr. Alvin Lazar. I hope that the knowledge we have gained and the ideas we have discussed in this webinar will be useful in our future education and endeavors. Once again, thank you everyone and good afternoon. Okay, okay thank you, sir, Alex. Okay, please scan the QR code being flashed on the screen for the post-evaluation and these certificates for your attendance will be directly uh, sent to you after you answer the evaluation. Okay, so please take a moment uh, to scan this uh, post-evaluation QR code. Also, uh, please do not forget to input your uh, no, email. active emails so that uh, we, can, we can email them uh, directly to you. And also, if you have questions, we will provide the responses uh, to, through your provided emails. Okay, so that was a very fruitful webinar, Ma'am Marley. Yes. So I hope, I hope uh, not. Every nurse that attended our webinar was enlightened by the issues, trends, and challenges in the nursing manpower, especially in this uh, new normal. Okay, so as we are going through our scanning phase, I would like to thank uh, the participation of our, of our beloved Dr. Yang and uh, Dr. Marcos Cho. Also, special thanks to our uh, Vice AVP from Nursing Service Direction, direct, uh, from Nursing Service Division, Ma'am Ruth Camero, and also the AVP from our HR Department, Sir Kenneth Tahar, the ICT Department of PWU, and the Multimedia Department of Philippine Women's University. Thank you for your uh, support, and also to our audiences and our dear colleagues. So we thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope that you learned a lot from the discussions. And again, thank you very much for your participation and for joining this afternoon's webinar. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we will be posting this QR code for uh, one more minute. And then after that, uh, that's it. And uh, thank you. Have a great day and good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.